from my stationary treadmill because I was making people motion sick, um, uh, as I do every month to answer any questions you may have. For those of you unfamiliar with my work, every year I read through every issue of every English language nutrition journal in the world. So busy folks like you don't have to. I then compile all the most interesting, most groundbreaking, most practical findings, new videos and articles upload every day to my nonprofit site, nutritionfacts.org. Everything on the website is free. There's no ads, no corporate sponsorship, strictly non-commercial, not selling anything, just putting up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother, whose own life was saved with evidence-based nutrition. All right, let us go to your questions and see what we have on the list. Oh my God, there's already tons and tons of questions. Let's see what we got. Okay, let's, uh, first one is... Hello, I are animal products. Do what the animal products, the axons and eugens do they? What is? I do not understand this question. Okay, animal products, dioxins. There's no such thing as an anugen, as far as I know. You can call gametic cells. You mean like gametes? Any employee in plumes? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I. To uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I do not know the answer to this question because I'm not sure I quite understand the question. I guess they're saying, does it cause birth? Can dioxins in animal products cause birth defects? Um, that is not something that I've looked to. In terms of specific birth defects like Down syndrome, I don't know. Next question, is there any real benefit of supplementing with supposed, supposed clean vitamins? I don't know what that means. B12, D3, iodine, and omega-3s as opposed to the cheaper versions with added fillers. Or is this just a sell, sales ploy? I don't know what clean vitamins means. So maybe someone's selling something, calling them clean? Um, I mean, it doesn't matter if there's, I mean, if there's some, you know, rice powder or something as a filler for your vitamin D, as long as you're getting the vitamin D that's actually on the label, who cares? It's like this much rice powder. I don't know. So uh, I wouldn't spend extra money. I'd spend that extra money on buying more kale. Okay, next up. Where can I get video testimonials without actors of type 2 diabetics, type 1 diabetics for... Um, well, I don't know where you get video testimonials. I guess you put a, put a, you, you make a post online and say, I need testimonials for somebody um, who requires these, you know, has these uh, particular uh, uh, disease and on a particular diet. Next up, maybe I should start reading these questions first before just clicking on them, just in case we can answer some better questions. Um, okay, should we have whole food plant-based veganism educated at, we, we, we got some bad grammar problems today, educated at universities, colleges, medical schools, and schools, and schools, as part of holistic medical biosciences or biochemistry subject programs as part of a study degree? Uh, we should teach more nutrition in medical schools, yes. I'll just take that as a, um, will I do a video? What is an anugen? I've never, that sounds like something, someone's trying to sell you anything. All right, I am actually going to read the questions just because I get such weird ones. Um, uh, uh, well, okay, here's one. That, that's legitimate. Uh, is it okay to take over-the-counter plant sterols such as col cholesterol? Yes, um, you can. Although you can get uh, sterols and stanols by eating nuts and seeds. And uh, that, uh, so you don't need to take them in supplement form, but you certainly can. Um, okay, this is, um, this is a kind of a, a, a just a, Clarification question. Um, uh, they love how not to age. That's very nice. Um, can I please explain what is case fatality rate in relation to studies? Um, uh, so that's the number of people that um, died. So uh, um, uh, the, so it's like um, uh, if there's a higher case fatality rate in one group versus, you know, randomized to supplement X versus randomized placebo, a higher case fatality rate would be bad. Lower case fatality rate would be good since fatality, not a great thing. Okay. Can, da, 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 da. Okay. Well, this question, can the weight loss benefits of tea and coffee also be obtained from decaf? You'd have to check my how not to diet book where I talk about um, tea and coffee in terms of the, um, in terms of activating autophagy, something from my latest book, how not to age. 
Um, autophagy is activated by the chlorogenic acid, not the caffeine, which the chlorogenic acid is the primary antioxidant in coffee. And so decaf or calf works just as well in terms of decreasing um, all-cause mortality. So three cups of coffee a day associated with 13% lower risk of dying from all causes put together. Um, and the healthiest coffee is actually paper filtered because it uh, traps the cholesterol raising compounds in coffee, explaining why people drinking filtered coffee live even longer than those drinking unfiltered coffee, though they both live longer than those not drinking any coffee at all. Um, is A2 milk good for health? I talk about that in a video on nutritionfacts.org. Just type in A2 in nutritionfacts.org and it'll pop right up. Um, okay. For the purposes of the Daily Dozen, does a portion of bok choy or cabbage take the boxes for both leafy greens and cruciferous vegetables? No, they are. So pick one. They are both. Uh, uh, so we want people to get uh, leafy greens. So you could eat all cruciferous, um, but then you'd have to eat two servings to uh, check out both boxes. That's how I. Um, uh, 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 that's how I kind of created the daily dozen to work. So, for example, like um, I encourage berries and other fruits. Um, those are two separate boxes. Um, and so, wait a second, berries are fruits. So can't you just check off both boxes? If you just eat berries, no. You got to eat berries and you got to eat other fruits. Just like you got to eat cruciferous vegetables and other leafy greens. Though those can be cruciferous vegetables too. Just like the other fruits can be more berries. Um, all right. Um, does frozen turmeric root still deliver the benefits even though it's been frozen? I believe so. And that's I right now. In fact, this morning, I took fresh fro uh, turmeric root chopped it up into pieces for my vegetable smoothie recipe, which I uh, have a, uh, a cooking video on on nutritionfacts.org um, uh, because I'm actually home for a few days after being on the road for weeks. And so I can eat, I can drink my vegetable smoothie that I love so much. Um, and so I got some fresh turmeric root, chopped it up in quarter inch pieces because one piece goes in each smoothie recipe and then put the rest in the freezer. Um, and so I am counting on the fact that all the nutrition is preserved. All right. Um, I've heard it recommended to pair fruits and nuts uh, to have proper nutrition and absorption. Is that true? Um, what is true is that uh, we want uh, no. The, the, we want to have whole food sources of fat in our stomach. At the same time, we're eating carotenoid-rich foods like dark green leafy vegetables. Or fruits and vegetables in general. So we're eating our greens. We want to maximize absorption of both water-soluble and fat-soluble um, nutrients. And so that's why having some avocados, nuts and seeds, nut and seed butters in our stomach at the same time boosts the absorption of those um, vision-enhancing uh, you know, compounds in greens like lutein, zeaxanthin, beta-carotene, lycopene, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so, uh, so we should not be eating fat-free meals if we want to maximize the absorption of all the wonderful um, plant nutrients, but we don't want to have uh, refined sources of fat like uh, like oil. We want to maintain retain all that nutrition by eating whole plant foods. Oh, this is an easy question. Um, when will the How Not to Age cookbook come out? I told everybody December 2024, which is when it was supposed to come out, but evidently the printer is the publisher is having problems getting a printer. It's very expensive printing because it's like full color printing, it's all fancy. Um, and so I think they actually have to print it outside of the country these days. Um, uh, anyway, for whatever reason, it's not going to come out till spring 2025. I'm so sorry about that, but that's the current um, estimate. But it's done. Actually, the, we sent in the manuscript. All the recipes are done. It's awesome. We actually tested the right. We had a whole bevy of volunteers. I was just speaking at a couple talks and people come up to me like, I'm one of your recipe testers. Um, and so thank you, everyone who's tested all the recipes. They're good to go. But, oh my God, it's going to be another year before the book comes out, unfortunately. Oh, I just checked on this without reading it first. Let's see what it says. Do people with inflammatory diseases such as ulcerative colitis need more protein in the RDA to help with healing quicker? Huh, I don't know of any higher... Um, certainly, if wound healing requires um, higher protein intake. So if you have like pressure ulcers, um, randomizing people with pressure ulcers to higher protein intake actually has improved healing. Um, so any kind of, you know, recovery from surgery, you need to boost your protein intake. But, uh, so it's possible. Oh, God, burn victims have extraordinarily high, uh, protein intake, protein requirements. I mean, it would not surprise me that inflammatory diseases, um, might have uh, higher protein intakes, but I don't, uh, I don't know if that's actually been uh, tested. 
Okay. Do, 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 do. Let me see. Oh, here's a banana question. Let's see what it says. Polyphenol oxidase banana bread. What is with the grammar today? <laughs> I'm reading this just the way it says it. Polyphenol oxidase banana brown can. An apple be eaten with a meal or should they be eaten alone on empty stomach so not to lower nutrients absorbed like you said? Bananas should no lemon juice, please. What is going on? Ha! Oh, my God. Okay, let me see if I can try to figure out what they actually meant to say. Can an apple be... Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, good point. Oh, I, it's actually a good question. I don't understand the lemon juice part, but, uh, yeah, no, so, um, uh, you know, I talked about this interesting study. I have a whole webinar on it. Check out the webinar. Uh, but basically, you know, if you mix a, a banana in a smoothie, it can impair the absorption of a certain percentage, only about a third of the berries, uh, of the polyphenols in the berries or, or cocoa powder. That was the study was done on cocoa uh, the cocoa flavanols, but presumably it'd be the same thing with berries. And so, yeah, so ideally to maximize our absorption, we'd eat bananas separately. Same thing with, uh, with, um, uh, um, um, with, uh, uncooked mushrooms, which also have the enzyme or with, um, with apples, uncooked apples, um, because it has also has that, uh, that, uh, same enzyme. And we we'll presume to have the same effect, although it has not been tested. All right. Do, 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 do. Oh, oh let's, this question didn't look totally crazy. Can you tell us the benefits of beets, especially in athletes? Again, thank you for all your tremendous work. I certainly can. <laughs> so the nitrates, the vegetable nitrates, concentrated in dark green leafy vegetables, as well as beet greens and beets, um, improves the eff efficiency of our mitochondria, the little power plants within our cells, allowing us to effectively extract more energy from each breath. So you give free divers a little shot of beet juice, they can actually hold their breath longer, significantly longer. It's so cool. And the candle that burns half as bright burns twice as long. You can actually slow your metabolic rate because your, your power plants are so efficient when you eat greens that you can, uh, that you can, uh, uh, live longer. Um, uh, so that's one of the reasons why dark green leafy vegetables makes it into my anti-aging eight and also boosts athletic performance. Obviously, if you get more power from every breath, you can, you know, finish a 5k faster and all those other wonderful things. And I have lots of videos on beets and beet juice and nitrates and why you shouldn't take supplements and safe ways to do it on nutritionfacts.org. Okay. Um, bum, 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 bum. Um, uh, this is a uh, cancer patient prescribed all sorts of nutrients after a total gastrectomy. Is that truly needed? A gastrectomy is a stomach removal. Um, and, uh, yeah. So anytime one undergoes, uh, kind of a rearrangement or excision of significant parts of one's digestive tract, one may, ne may need to take supplements for the rest of their lives. And so, I mean, there's some nutrient deficiencies we didn't even know were nutrient deficiencies until we started doing weight loss surgeries, um, where we actually cut out parts of people's digestion. And then, you know, a decade later, all of a sudden they go blind because of copper deficiency. We didn't even know that we needed that, but no one gets copper deficiency unless actually you, you create malabsorption on purpose. That's what bariatric surgery does, is trying to make sure you don't absorb nutrition right? Because they're trying to not absorb calories, but you also don't absorb a lot of nutrition. So you may need to be um, absolutely on uh, nutrient supplements th for the rest of your life. So that uh, seems, um, so um, uh, you should talk to your, um, uh, talk to your uh, dietitian um, uh, um, after any kind of surgery like that and see what nutrients you need to take for the rest of your life, just because you don't have the organ <laughs> um, necessary to either absorb it directly or create the compounds that are necessary for absorption lower on in the digestive tract. Okay. All the plant-based omega-3 algae supplements I've found contain sunflower oil. Is it normal for these supplements? If not, can you suggest a brand? Uh, it's like a drop of sunflower oil. The capsules are really small. I would not worry about that. And the benefits of taking, getting uh, the presumptive benefits of getting 250 milligrams of DHA would um, outweigh any detriments of getting a few calories worth of oil in your diet. Okay, next up. Oh, oh I'm on long-term prednisolone. How can I... Ch well, it depends what, what, what you're taking prednisolone for. So prednisolone is a corticosteroid. You usually take that for suppressing inflammation in the body. 
Um, and so, uh, the, so a, a natural treatment for that condition depends on what you're actually trying to treat. Okay. Um, yeah, there's really not much for this. So any advice for reducing loose skin when losing a hundred plus pounds on a plant-based diet? First of all, congratulations. That's fantastic. Unfortunately, there's no way that I know of other than surgery. So there's actually surgery that can remove that excess skin. Um, yeah. But look, this would be the, 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 you know, the worst of your problems. That's awesome. All right. Uh, all right. Let's see what else we have. Um, please discuss green smoothies as opposed to chewing greens and berries. They're both great. Do whatever you want. Fantastic. I've stubbornly, oh, stubbornly high uh, systolic blood pressure, 64-year-olds. Any suggestions? Oh, my God. So many things. So I, oh, what did I just, oh, black sesame seeds. A teaspoon a day of ground black sesame seeds reduces systolic blood pressure by eight points within, ooh, I forget, like a month? I don't know. Uh, it's in my new book, How Not to Age. Um, all sorts of other things reduce uh, blood pressure, uh, ground flax seeds, hibiscus tea, just type on high blood pressure into nutritionfacts.org and all the videos will come up. Sodium uh, reduction, right? Obviously, you want to make sure you're not exceeding the American Heart Association recommendation for 1,500 milligrams of sodium a day, which is almost impossible if you eat processed foods, which is responsible for 70% of our salt intake. Okay. Um, any suggestions for fibroids? Absolutely. Go to nutritionfacts.org, type in fibroids, and see what I have to say about it. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, another omega-3 question. What if someone does not have access to algae-based EPA, DHA? Um, well, um, you may be able to make enough um, by eating short-chain omega-3s like alpha-linolenic acid found in walnuts and ground flax seeds and chia seeds, hemp seeds. Um, but we're just not sure enough for optimum health. That's why I encourage people to consider 250 milligrams of DHA uh, as supplemental form, uh, pollutant-free, of course, so that's algae-based. Um, what do you mean if you don't have access? Um, so do you not have access to the internet? That's possible. I mean, a lot of people don't have access to the internet on planet Earth, but if you do, then you should be able to order it anywhere, presumably. Um, uh, and so, but, uh, you know, getting... Uh, you know, getting my tablespoon of ground flax seeds, I recommend every day in my daily dozen, uh, should give you kind of the 2.2 grams of uh, alpha linolenic acid you need um, to hopefully make enough lung change. We just don't know. Um, if I had to, yeah, I would not uh, encourage people to take fish oil just because we're concerned about those um, pollutants that are not eliminated through molecular distillation. We can get rid of those toxic heavy metals like mercury, but like the PCBs and DDT and stuff, we just, uh, dioxins, we can't get out. And we've so polluted our oceans, unfortunately. What is a solution for osteoarthritis? The number one cause of physical disability in men and women. I've got tons of videos on that. I encourage people to switch to a plant-based diet, including specific plants such as strawberries, um, which have been shown to decrease total pain, intermittent pain, pain improve quality of life, etc., cetera, et cetera, and disability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, wonderful. Whew. Um. Oh, that's a good question. I get that a lot in talks. Uh, what about the lead content in cocoa powder? Um, so there are. So we're concerned about lead and cadmium, two um, uh, toxic metals that have been found in certain brands. Um, so if it, you just eat uh, cocoa powder once in a while, like, you know, chocolate cake on someone's birthday or something, you don't really need to worry about it. But if you eat cocoa powder the way I encourage you to eat cocoa powder, like a tablespoon a day, which has all these um, beneficial effects, um, then you really want to find a, a low metal cocoa. Uh, and in which case you can go, there's been two recent ones, one by Consumers Lab, which is a for-profit kind of third-party testing company, and one by Consumers Union, the publisher of Consumer Reports, a nonprofit organization. And so you just choose the brand that you like that happens to have low levels. Um, so, for example, I think the consumers, I forget which one, but uh, the lowest toxin cocoa was a uh, target brand generic cocoa. So that's the one I use. Um, uh, you know, so great. Now it's funny. I was in Europe telling, just go to target and get cocoa. And they're like, what? Evidently it's just a kind of a U.S. thing, but, but they list, they test international cocoa. So you can find one in your, that's convenient for you. Um, that has low metal content. 
Bum, bum, bum. Okay, any advice on high cholesterol, please? Vegan diet, more avocados to avoid medications if possible. Um, if you have high cholesterol, you need to decrease your intake of the three things that increase your cholesterol in your blood, which is saturated fat, trans fats, and dietary cholesterol. Um, so uh, if you did go on a strictly plant-based diet, your cholesterol levels would drop down on average to perfect, uh, at least for primary prevention. Um, so, uh, you know, total cholesterol of, uh, of uh, less than 150, LDL cholesterol less than 70. However, it's a bell curve. If you end up even higher than that due to genetic predisposition, then you can add, the next step would be add cholesterol-lowering foods to your diet, like as documented in the portfolio diet, um, which is a portfolio of different foods that bring your cholesterol down, like soluble fiber-rich foods, these slimy foods like okra, oatmeal, um, eggplant, um, uh, there are all sorts of cool things that use different mechanisms to lower your cholesterol so they kind of have additive effects. That's what I would suggest. And it's a plant-based diet, but just with specific plant foods to lower your cholesterol um, lower. Um, this is a weird question. Is it a myth that only fresh rice is okay? I don't even know what that means. I don't know why I clicked on it. It doesn't make any sense to me. As opposed to like refrigerated rice or I don't know. Anyway, um, bu, 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 bu. Uh, okay. Oh, here's uh, here's a question. I take Costco B12. Finances are niche meat, so tend to only do Kirkland stuff. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. In fact, I think uh, Kirkland brand is UP, uh, USP certified, which is what I recommend getting. But you know, if you're only taking uh, uh, you know uh, you know two thousand micrograms once a week, you know if you're under sixty five. That should cost less than five bucks a year. So, it, you know, finances should not um, prevent people from uh, getting sufficient vitamin B12, which, which is critically important for anyone eating a plant-based diet. Any downside of using baking soda in coffee plus soy milk to prevent the soy milk from curdling? How, what, how funny is that? So, yeah, actually the... Curdling of soy milk has to do with the pH. Um, so most soy milks these days are smart enough to know that, so they actually balance the pH, so you don't have that curdling effect. But if you happen to have some soy milk that does curdle, you can actually change the pH your fat, uh, yourself. But the problem with baking soda is it's sodium bicarbonate, hence adding sodium, which you don't want to do. Um, so I guess you could get potassium bicarbonate um, and not worry about it, or just get another brand of soy milk where they figure it out for you. Next up, uh, will I publish a book with just my how not to age summaries and conclusions? No, all the summaries, I mean, um, all the information is in how not to age. Um, it's just not as neatly packaged as I would have liked. Uh, in my book club over the last four weeks, I used, I, I showed people the summaries and conclusions from uh, the 1,200-page version that, that was twice as long. I had to cut all those summaries. Um, but, of course, cutting summaries doesn't actually cut content, which is why I cut the summaries. Um, and I know that how they're useful, they're helpful. That's why I did it in the book club. Um, but will I be publishing those? No, you'll just have to read the chapters really well. Or, oh, how about just watch the book club? All the summaries and conclusions are in the book club. And uh, so the one, I just finished it literally right before this Q&A, the fourth one. So it may take a while for them to go online, but they're all going to be online. You can watch it yourself. And so I am publishing the the uh, summaries and conclusions, but just in video form. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Uh, what do I, oh, this is a softball. What do I think about hibiscus tea? It's fantastic. Um, for reasons I document in how not to age and how not to, uh, excuse me, how not to die and how not to diet. I don't know. I don't think hibiscus um, has uh, any particular anti-aging properties, although it has the anthocyanins. Um, I talk about uh, rooibos and chamomile tea, I think, and how not to age. But yeah, how not to diet and how not to die. Both talk about hibiscus tea because it helps with weight loss and helps with decreasing blood pressure. All right. Oh, here's kind of a nice high-level question. Um, eh, what uh, can individuals do to navigate this conflicting nutrition information? Right, one day coffee's good, one day coffee's bad. Why do we get all this conflicting information? It's because that's it's called clickbait, right? 
Um, you know, I mean, you know, uh, the reason that every headline every single day isn't heart disease is the number one killer of men and women, right? Which is true. Like that's the most important thing, right? Not some like plane crash somewhere. Um, our leading cause of death is because, yeah, it gets old. You want sexy bullshit, basically. That's what get clicks. And so by saying coffee's good, then coffee's bad, get more clicks. Or you say, you know, if I say broccoli is good, who's going to click on that? Duh. But if you say bologna is good, oh my God, that'll get clicks, right? Because they're like, ooh, that's contradictory. Anyway. Um, so, but what can we do? Um, so I encourage people to, for example, go to the True Health Initiative um, website, truehealthinitiative.org. True Health so there's a nonprofit organization, kind of the IPCC of nutrition. How do you know? If climate change is real or will you ask climate scientists who spent their whole lives studying this stuff? And so they hold this conference, um, uh, this, 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 this kind of, and come up with kind of consensus statement with, this is what the science says on climate. Okay. Well, there's uh, so Dr. Uh, David Katz, uh, head of the Yale's um, prevention research center, uh, said, you know, we need some kind of like, you know, similar body of nutrition. So got hundreds of the top nutrition scientists in the world to uh, agree on a consensus statement because there's so much crazy stuff on the internet. It's like, well, wait a second, we just need to bring all the experts who dedicate their lives to the study of the science of nutrition. Be like, okay, what does the science say? And it turns out there's remarkable consensus going back decades on the on the core tenets of healthy eating and healthy living. Spoiler alert, if you go to twohealthinitiative.org, you'll find out that the healthiest diet for human being is one that is centered around whole, unprocessed plant foods. So, yeah, anyway. All right. Whew. Um, bum, 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 bum. Let's see. Here's a B12 question. Uh, 2,000 micrograms of B12 a week, uh, under age 65, 1,000 a day, over 65. I've been taking cyanocobalamin. Excellent. Oh, 1,000 once a week? No, you should take two of those. Yeah. Um, oh, in terms of breastfeeding, I have a video talking about how much um, pregnant breastfeeding, uh, pregnant breastfeeding women, as well as children at different ages and different weights need, how much B12 they need. Um, so I would just type in B12 into nutritionfacts.org, and that should pop right back up. Oh my God, I got one minute left. <laughs> Trying to think of uh, a good question. Um, boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Is there a daily limit to chia? Uh, uh, not that I know of. Chia, chia seeds are great. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, there's technically there's a limit. You can overdo anything, but uh, um, but no, chia seeds are healthy. Um, all right, and with that, uh, I will talk to everyone next week. Not next week, next month, but maybe next week if you happen to be in one of the hundred cities I'm coming to speak on my how not to age speaking tour. In which case, I will see you then. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs>